Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back. I realize I haven't posted in quite a while on the channel. Just been busy with a lot of different projects and decided to take just a little bit of a break, but I wanted to get something out today and we're going to just do some sound design stuff today. Hopefully we've got some exciting projects that we'll cover on the channel soon at some point and some new plugins that I want to look at as well. But today we're just diving into Britwig to mess around with some cool sound design ideas and particularly looking at a modulator that I don't see people using loads. Uh, so I want to look at Parsec 8 some of my hardware in particular, and you'll see this quite often in quite a few um, brands. Um, in terms of the sequences, when you have a hardware synth, they quite often have a feature called parameter locking in the sequences. Um, what this is usually is per sequence or per step in a sequence, you can actually assign specific parameters to very par various parts of the synth. Uh, the mini, uh, well, the messenger has it, but that one is a little bit more rudimentary. It only allows you to do one parameter per step. Uh, Korg, on the other hand, has always had like pretty detailed, um, what they call it, motion sequencing, uh, which is very, very cool. But you can do something similar, and it's a lot of fun to experiment with. Uh, granted, maybe not the most practical example I'm going to show you here, but you can do some pretty cool stuff and just experiment with, with these modules. And I'll show you a couple of things that you can build on top of this as well. Let's dive in. We're going to take a look quickly. Okay, cool. So let's dive in. Uh, blank project. I'm just grabbing a polymer for this. Right, so let's get started. We're going to just set up a very basic sequence here quickly. Now, one thing that I like about Bitrig 6 now with the chords uh, that you have here, we're going to go with the minor, for example. This allows us to kind of get a sort of more sort of hardware-esque, in my opinion, sequencing experience out of this as well. We could use the built-in step sequencer in the note editor as well now, but I want to kind of just be able to generate stuff on the fly. So using the arpeggiator now, because of the uh chord and scale lock over here it's really easy to kind of get quick sequences with this now uh because this will mean that we're working in scales uh, well, in degrees of scales now rather than semitones so it makes it a little bit easier and quicker to dial in experiments and stuff uh, you'll see if we play this back are uh, we just getting single notes so if we go up by seven for example yeah that just happens to be an octave up. It's because it's the seventh degree of that scale, uh, which would be an octave. Likewise, seven down would be an octave down. But now we can just kind of play around with the different degrees here. That's kind of cool. Um, cool thing with this as well is that you can actually, because it's pretty much always going to be locked in scales, you could do stuff like this as well and have this one kind of generating a little bit of variation for you as well. Let's say each bar, for instance. Pretty interesting to come up with ideas. But let's get into the modulation side of things now. I want to take a look at Parsec 8, as we said. So I'm going to bring in a Parsec 8 on the Polymer channel over here, or on Polymer itself. And let's start messing around with this. We're going to dial in a very basic sound here quickly as well. I'll just grab a saw wave. Um, going for in-depth sound design in this sense here. Bring up the sub a little bit here, and let's just make this kind of plucky. And we'll just bring in a delay for effect as well. In fact, one little change there, instead of using a random modifier, yeah, so I think in this case it might actually be better to do something that's a little bit more controlled here. Yeah. We'll just use steps to change this one up. And we're going to need that one to be running. Let's just put in a single note here. We have this running indefinitely now. That's pretty cool. Now we've got something that's looping as well. It's not completely random. Okay, so let's get into POSIC 8. Uh, so the difference, we've got steps up open here now. The difference between steps, the key difference here is they're both going to kind of give us sequenced modulation data. Steps can be assigned to multiple different things at the same time as well. Uh, but the big difference here is that the 
the, the amount that you dial in, so you've got a percentage value here. If this is 100%, you can assign this to, let's say, the sync, the cutoff, and the decay time here. But every time that there's a value coming from the steps, you're going to be sending the decay time or the, the cutoff to that. Uh, so it, it's always going to be the same targets that it's going out to. It'll be different values, but it'd be always those targets gaining those values. The key difference here with these two is that this one, each step can have individual targets set up. So you can send, on step one, you could send a uh, modulation signal to the shape, the sync, and the cutoff. Number two, you could then send to the decay time, noise, and sub. Number three, you could send to a combination of all of those. And you have these individual steps with these parameter locking, essentially, that you have for each step. Uh, so it's almost like a state of the synth that's saved as snapshots. Uh, you could even use this as a sort of preset management tool, if you wanted to, that you could kind of dial between different states of the synths using this as well. And there's different ways you could step through this using like either different directions that you can go through it. Um, you can also step through this manually if you wanted to, I guess. And yeah, there's a phase one as well. This would allow you to kind of do manual setup of that as well. And we could experiment with that too. Let's assign a few of these. And I'm kind of being quite random here. Let's maybe add in a little bit of... up some of the and we're gonna have to play that back because we set the transport change the filter types and let's also adjust the timing of this one currently we are not following each note there so let's uh let's set this to 16th note so each note of our sequence has its own parameter lock available there we go some of these could get noise values even some of the phase distortion amounts Yeah, you can, go, you can go to town with this and just keep adding in different settings for each step here. Uh, if we take this off transport, or oh, leave it on transport, we can have a hold rate of zero, for example. Like I said, you could actually play around with modifying the steps by using the phase. So that's kind of useful for saving states uh, of the synth in, in a sort of preset selection almost like this. Um, but I'm kind of wanting to use this more as a, like a sequencing tool in this case. Let's go back to 16 notes again. So this is all good and well. Um, the only thing is that we're kind of now stuck with quite a repetitive sequence that we have going on here. Um, because you've only got the Parsec 8. You can't go further than that. But I'm going to show you now how you can actually wire this up to add additional steps of your or, or sequence. So you could play around firstly with trying out like the palindrome or ping pong it's going to give you a little bit of variation but maybe not quite what you're looking for so let's add in a second one and the cool thing here is you've actually got this master value so let's take this down uh, we'll take this value down to zero so we've got zero modulation occurring here there's two ways you could do this you could do this via two individual steps and use them as switches um, we could probably just do this with an additional Parsec 8 as well. And let's have that come in. And this Parsec 8 that we have here is just going to be set to two steps only. So we're going to have two individual steps that we can run through. We're going to set these to half notes now. So each group of eight sixteenth notes, it's going to create a switch to the next step here. We'll have Step one from, and, and, okay, so if, also if you are kind of um, wanting to see everything as well, if you hold down Alt, you can actually open up both of these steps that we have here. We can assign this one now to a value of 100%. So when step one is active, we can have 100% on this set of notes or of sequences coming out here. Take step two, and we can assign step two to 
100% on the second one. So now we've got a situation where they're now switching between each other. Uh, let's assign a few of these quickly because we've just copied it. And we haven't actually got new assignments occurring here. So let's just go and dial in a whole bunch of stuff on this. And let's see, let me do that. And I, again, I'm just kind of going completely random here. There's no real sort of rhyme and reason to anything. It's just the whole point of this is just to try and get some complex modulation occurring on this. So let's change that up as well. We could even give uh, some of these steps different glide values as well to change up the sequence a little bit too. We can have those, maybe even from the first one we'll have some more excessive glide. Play around with actually having some of these hold to as well. So let's. Uh... So there's plenty going on here now as well. Um, in addition to this, we could actually also decide let's um, give this even more variation. So let's take our second, our first, um, or our control parsec. Let's say that the one that's switching between parsec at one and two. Uh, we'll keep the same value assignments for this, but let's have three and four actually do something different here for us as well. So we'll have each of these now I can actually assign to different settings here. So we can have those values flip around for each of these on that third and fourth step here. And it doesn't have to be all of them either. You could do certain ones. Just try that out and now take a listen to the sequence that we get from that. Right, so obviously now as well, um, this is applying to our synth. Like we could do this on effects as well. Like you could build pretty complex effects chains using these as well. Bring something like the bit eight, for instance. And again, just hold down Alt and those so we can have them both open. And let's say, for instance, I want to just, uh, you know, assign a little bit of. And we could have those doing multiple different effects on multiple different uh, parameters for each effect. Let's take a reverb, for example, as well. This worked quite nicely. And we'll just grab the mix. Put an additional delay in there too. Set up a different setting for this one. some interesting effects modulation happening now too and the best part of all of this as well is that you are adding this to the sound that you have so all of this can be automated further uh, by adjusting the actual controls of the synth so you can kind of develop the sound further and just have these adding to anything that you're doing um, in some cases you might break uh, some of the connections here if you change this for example to a valve filter uh, the valve filter doesn't consider that uh, the vowel is a cutoff control, uh, and in that case, it breaks the connection. Um, but we could just play this back, and you can adjust anything you want. Let's move to a different filter type. Sounding pretty cool. Uh, and let's take this, just finish this off now with um, bringing in a voice stack spread. Uh, what I'm going to do is 
enable the voice stacking. We're going to go up to maybe just two on that, maybe just to get a nice wide sound. We'll assign the stack spread positive and negative onto our panning. Just bring the volume down just a touch. And let's maybe also just tweak. Actually, we're in the wavetable mode, so let's bring that in rather. We'll detune it there. Let's play that back. <laughs> And let's have some fun with the sequence now. Set this up to be 11 steps rather. You can also change up these now to be different amounts. Let's go 6 and 7. We'll change it both to pink one. folks that's why i love bitwig so much it's so much fun to kind of play around with this kind of modulation happening there and it's all kind of off off the cuff on the fly um really just just throwing everything at it uh, in interesting ways and you end up with some really really cool detailed movement happening there so yeah parsec 8 i don't see too many people using this i don't see too many presets making use of this either and it's a really interesting little module that to modulate various different parameters in interesting ways uh, and like I said, it also works really well as a switch, you know, kind of switch between different things, um, different states as well. Cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and uh, learned something from this. Uh, go make some cool sounds and I will see you soon right here on the channel. Till then, take care. Cheers.